Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course, we learn about the collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. We have been looking at uh, dealing with uh, probability distributions using R and we have discussed some discrete uh, distributions and now we are looking at uh, normal distribution. And in this session, we are going to learn about uh, error function and how the normal distribution is related to the error function. Uh, just to remind ourselves, the normal distribution is given by this expression, it is also known as uh, Gauss uh, uh, function. So, sigma is the uh, standard deviation and mu is the mean of the uh, normal distribution. So, it is an exponential minus x minus mu whole squared by 2 sigma squared and there is a normalization factor in the front which is 1 by sigma root 2 pi. It is possible to carry out a transformation of variable from x to z and uh, that uh, makes the mu 0 and the standard deviation 1. So, we take x minus mu by sigma as the z and uh, then we get the standard normal distribution uh, which has the normalization factor 1 by root 2 pi and it is just exponential minus z squared by 2. And we have also learnt that uh, random errors are nice uh, always follows the normal distribution and we saw an example of uh, electrical conductivity in uh, electrolytic tough pitch copper and we saw that uh, repeated measurements if you make because of random errors you get normal distribution. Now we want to learn about error function and uh, the error function is related to the cumulative distribution function of standard normal variable. So, capital F of z uh, is related to the error function and by definition error function is uh, 1 by root pi minus x to plus x exponential minus t square dt. Uh, but uh, because we are going to and, and, and error function is uh, symmetric, so we are going to make it 0 to x and uh, multiply it uh, by 2. So, error function of x is 2 by root 2 pi and uh, integral 0 to x exponential minus t square dt. So, this is the definition that we are going to use. 1 minus error function of x is known as the complementary error function and sometimes it is denoted as Fc of x. And uh, for x less than 0, the cumulative distribution of standard normal variable is just a half error function uh, x by root 2 and for x greater than or equal to 0, it is half 1 plus error function of x by root 2. So, we are going to plot these functions and see how they are related. So, in other words, if we can take a standard normal variable and get its cumulative distribution function, from that we can actually calculate the error function. For example, 2 times f of x minus 1 uh, will give you the error function of x by root 2. Uh, so, that is what we are going to look at and we will also learn how the error function is related to the diffusion problem. To understand uh, the diffusion problem, diffusion flux and concentration gradient are related by a constitutive law and uh, it is uh, given as a fixed first law of diffusion. It says that the diffusion flux is proportional to the concentration gradient and the proportionality constant is called diffusivity and uh, the negative sign indicates that uh, diffusional fluxes are such that concentration gradients will get evened out over a long period of time. Now, if you add to fix first law the law of conservation of mass, you get the so called fix second law. Uh, so, it is a it is a conservation uh, law. So, there is no really new law uh, called fix second law. Fix first law is a constitutive law. Second law is just combination of the constitutive law with the law of conservation of mass. And that gives you dou c by dou t that is the rate of change of concentration uh, with time uh, as del dot d del c. So, d del c is the um, uh, term that comes from the first law uh, which is just uh, the concentration gradient and uh, the proportionality constant uh, d and so there is uh, another uh, uh, del operator uh, which is operating on this. And uh, at this point it is useful to note that the Fourier law of heat conduction which is also a constitutive law and if you add to it law of conservation of energy you get a very similar equation and that is the uh, equation for heat conduction. So, that uh, it is given in terms of temperature and instead of d you have alpha which is the thermal diffusivity. So, dou t by dou t is alpha del square t is a common form for the 
uh, heat conduction. And uh, because of the similarity between the two forms uh, as you can see, uh, the solutions uh, for both are very similar in uh, mathematical terms, it is just the interpretation uh, that uh, varies. However, in this uh, part of the session, we are going to stick to the diffusion equation. So, we are going to concentrate on this uh, equation dou C by dou T is del dot D del C and if you assume that uh, D is a constant you can pull it out it will become D del squared C which is alpha del squared C. So, they are uh, very similar. So, if you look at the solution to the fixed second law uh, in what is known as a semi infinite bar. Uh, for the boundary conditions at uh, x equal to 0 there is a concentration it is called Cs to say that it is a surface concentration and uh, at x equal to infinity there is, that is far away from the surface there is a concentration C0. And in this case the solution uh, is shown to be concentration uh, as a function of uh, position and time x and t and they always appear in this uh, combination x by root dt and uh, root dt is actually known as the diffusion distance and uh, so, so this uh, uh, is nothing but uh, surface concentration minus the difference between surface concentration and far field concentration error function of x by 2 root dt. And uh, this solution of fixed second law is uh, relevant for cases such as doping and carburization etc. Because in these cases uh, you can think of a material. Uh, which has uh, some given amount of concentration and uh, on the surface we start uh, increasing the concentration so that there is diffusion that takes place into the material. So, as uh, time goes by the concentration keeps changing in the material. So, this is what is described by this equation and all this uh, solutions and uh, the, the next couple of solutions that I am going to show they are all described in Porter and distilling phase transformation in metals and alloys. So, the next is also a semi infinite bar solution, but in this case uh, the solution is slightly different because uh, instead of uh, surface concentration being a specific concentration it is kept at 0, but the far field concentration is uh, at the same value C naught let us say. So, this is uh, relevant for things like decarburization because if you have a material that has some amount of concentration of one of the species and uh, at the surface. Uh, beyond the surface you will see that there is uh, no concentration of this species. So, there is a concentration gradient. So, this uh, will start leaving the material and in that case the solution is uh, C naught error function x by 2 root dt. You can also think of another solution uh, which is two semi infinite bars which are attached to each other. Uh, so, this is uh, for the boundary condition at x equal to 0 you have uh, um, a combination. Uh, that is uh, so it should be a plus sign here 0 0.5 C1 plus uh, C2 and uh, you if you go on the one side to the left side say at x equal to minus infinity the far field composition is C1 and x equal to plus infinity on the right side the composition far field composition is C2. So, in other words we take two bars one has a far field composition C2 other one has a far field composition C1 and we put them together at time t equal to 0. So, obviously, at the interface where they are put together the uh, net concentration will be an average of the two and then the solution is given by this expression. So, it is C1 plus C2 by 2 minus C1 minus C2 by 2 error function x by root 2t. So, um, this is relevant for cases where if you take two different compositions uh, of a particular material and weld them together uh, as a function of time how the composition changes for example. You can also think of other cases you can make C1 and C2 to be 0 and you can imagine putting a small amount of material at the, uh, at the center and allow it to diffuse for example. And uh, that solution is uh, relevant uh, for radioactive tracers and even for calculating diffusivity for example. So, all these things are described in detail in Porter and Distilling phase transformations in metals and alloys in brief. There are also other classic textbooks uh, for diffusion uh, such as uh, Schumann's uh, diffusion uh, textbook. <coughs> there are also <coughs> mathematical textbooks which describe the solution of diffusion equation for different boundary conditions. Uh, because diffusion equation is a partial differential equation, the solution depends on what boundary conditions you assume. So, depending on boundary condition uh, the solution will change. So, in other words the complete description 
of the partial differential equation includes the boundary condition. So, if you give the equation and give the relevant boundary conditions then you can get uh, solutions and they are different for different boundary conditions. So, the, here are the 3 cases uh, where error function uh, turns out to be the solution and as we have seen error function is related to the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal variable. So, uh, you can now um, use R to plot the uh, error function solution for these 3 scenarios. And that is what we are going to do in this session. And just to summarize, so we have been looking at normal or standard normal distribution. We have noticed that distribution of random errors or noise follows this distribution. We have also seen that the cumulative distribution function of standard normal distribution is related to error function. Uh, which happens to be a solution for the partial differential equations that describe diffusion and heat conduction and so on. So, it is relevant from that point of view also. And there is another reason why normal distribution is common. In fact, the word normal itself says that uh, this uh, is expected to be the most common distribution. Irrespective of uh, distribution from which you sample, if there are random fluctuations uh, which are result of many independent random components and they also tend to be distributed uh, normally. Uh, there are exceptions, highly skewed distributions and distributions with no finite variance uh, do not follow this. <coughs> but in general, you will find that uh, normal uh, is uh, very common and that is why uh, in many, many things uh, we use uh, uh, normal distribution or standard normal distribution as a sort of benchmark and we describe everything else with respect to uh, the normal distribution. So, we will see a couple of uh, examples of this and in many a times uh, we are actually interested in knowing if a particular data that we have received is norm normal or not or does it follow normal distribution or not, uh, how to look at those things uh, etc. will be things that we will look at in the following sessions. But in this session now let us go back and look at the diffusion solution and try to use R to get the diffusion solution. So, so as usual we will get R. So, this is version 3.6.1 uh, action of the toes is what it is called and uh, we need to look at uh, the um, working directory. We need to make sure that we are at the right directory and the first thing to do is to actually plot the um, error function. Okay. So, let us uh, do this. So, so, we are going to plot error function from between minus 5 and plus 5 and uh, what we are going to plot is, so you can see that uh, p norm z01 is nothing but uh, the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal variable, 2 times that minus 1 is actually going to describe the error function that is what we have seen and that is what we are going to use here. So, if you do this you see that uh, the function as it goes to minus infinity goes to minus 1 as it goes to plus infinity goes to plus 1 uh, that is because error function of minus x is nothing but minus of error function x. So, it is um, about 0 uh, it is just negative of this. So, so that is why the, the function looks like this. <coughs> so, if you go to uh, Porter and Easterling for example, you will see the error function plotted and uh, here is the plot that gives the same thing uh, for us. Okay. So, the next step is to get the semi-infinite bar solution and for that we have to assume certain uh, coefficients for diffusion and so on and uh, okay. So, let me first get the full code. This. Okay. So, what we are trying to do in this is to actually uh, reproduce um, some of the figures that are there in uh, Porter and Easterling. So, let us assume that uh, the uh, surface concentration is 1.4. So, let us assume that the surface concentration is 1.4 and far field composition is 
and diffusivity is uh, 4 e power minus uh, 11 meter square per second. And uh, we are going to look at uh, uh, some 0.5 millimeter um, distance to which we are going to starting from surface uh, some 0.5 millimeter is the distance to which we are going to look at uh, um, diffusion. And we are going to consider time of 10 seconds, 50 seconds and 100 seconds. So, if you look at for these numbers uh, Porter and Distilling tells you uh, that is about 1000 seconds is what it will take for the composition to uh, penetrate the entire uh, 2 millimeter uh, distance for example. But we are going to plot uh, the early stages uh, 10, 50 and 100 seconds. So, Z1 is x by 2 square root dt. Uh, this is the parameter that goes into the error function solution that we saw. So, uh, so the, the solution itself uh, is given in terms of error function. So, this is the parameter for error function. So, for that parameter we have to calculate the cumulative distribution function from the standard normal distribution multiply it by 2 subtract 1. So, that is the error function actually. So, this is the parameter of the error function uh, because the, the t is changing. Uh, for every x. So, we need to calculate that parameter from that parameter for the given x and t uh, we can find the solution and x is a sequence. So, it goes from 0 to 0 0.5 millimeter and then for time t equal to 10 seconds for example. So, we are getting the solution uh, and parameter and from the parameter we are getting the solution and we are going to plot. And remember the solution had surface concentration minus the difference between surface and far field concentration multiplied by the error function solution. So, this is the first solution for 10 seconds. Similar thing for 50 seconds and 100 seconds. And so, they are the 50 second 100 second solutions are going to be marked in blue and red. Um, so, after we do that I also want to plot certain lines. So, this is the 0 that is the surface we are going to plot. I am going to also draw a line uh, at uh, root dt uh, different lines and I am going to show you. So, if you look at the figure in Portland distilling it shows that the distance from the surface into the material is actually proportional to square root dt. So, so this, this from the surface the distance to which penetration happens is actually. So, that is what this line horizontal line is going to show us. So, here is the solution. So, this is the surface and this is the 10 second solution. So, you can see that this is proportional to uh, root dt uh, because th this is the root dt value that we have plotted for 10 seconds and this is uh, for 50, this is for 100 and you can see as the time proceeds uh, the diffusion uh, the flux increases into the material because there is a concentration gradient this is 1.4 this is 0.1. So, the, the material will uh, keep accumulating uh, in the system so that the concentration gradients are getting evened out. So, that is where we are moving towards and uh, that is what is uh, shown and this is a figure that is there in uh, Porter and Easterling for example. So, you can generate the same solution uh, using R. Of course, we can also generate the other solutions. And the second solution is of course, we want to keep the surface uh, concentration to be 0 and we want to look at uh, far field composition to be 0.1 and then we want to look at what happens to the solution. So, let us do that. Um, So, we are doing the same thing surface concentration is 0 for field composition let us say is 0 0.6 and same diffusivity and we are again looking at some 0 0.5 millimeter and we take 10 seconds, 50 seconds and 100 seconds and we are going to use the same formula because uh, uh, when you substitute C s to be 0 uh, it reduces to C naught times Z 1 1 uh, the, the, the error function solution. So, that is what we saw. So, because this is also a semi infinite bar solution. So, it should be the same solution and again we have drawn uh, certain uh, vertical and horizontal lines to show what is happening to the solution. So, if you plot. So, in this case the material has uh, very high concentration 0 
at the surface uh, the concentration is 0. So, obviously there is a concentration gradient between uh, what exists inside the material and at the surface. So, the, the concentration starts changing uh, the, the carbon atoms start leaving from the surface this is known as decarbonization and that leads to this kind of uh, profiles. And as you can see again here also we see that as uh, time goes on the extent to which decarbonization takes place the, the concentration for example in the bulk is falling and uh, how much does it fall depends on the uh, square root dt which is the diffusion distance that is why we call it diffusion distance because uh, dimension wise it is the distance and it basically tells you for a given time for a given diffusivity how much will be the depth to which uh, considerable diffusion would have taken place. So, that is what is shown uh, by this line to indicate that as time goes by uh, 10, 50, 100 seconds uh, the depth also keeps increasing to which decarbonization takes place. Of course, the last solution that we want to look at um, is the two semi-infinite bars put together with uh, for fill compositions uh, which are given by <coughs> C1 and C2. So, that is what we have done here. So, uh, let us assume again that C1 is 1.4, C2 is 0.1. So, we are taking two uh, steels uh, which compositions uh, with compositions 1.4 on one side and 0.1 on another side and we are putting them together and uh, diffusivity is the same 4 e power minus 11 meter square per second and uh, we are going to look at. Uh, so, now we the, the origin is at uh, where we have put this material together. So, on the minus you will see the material with uh, composition 1.4, on the positive side you will see composition a uh, material with composition 0.1 and at 0, so it will be an average of these two compositions. So, it will be 1.5 divided by 2 uh, which is like 0.75 and again we are going to look at solutions for time 10, 50 and 100 and for solution you just have to evaluate uh, this uh, parameter which is x by 2 square root dt and for that parameter you have to evaluate the error function. Error function is uh, given by the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution 2 times that minus 1 actually is the error function solution and uh, remember error function is an integral and uh, the quantity that is inside the integral gets uh, integrated out. So, it is the boundary uh, condition. So, it, it, the, the solution is 0 to x by 2 square root dt. So, that is what gets substituted and that is why it is a function of this uh, value and that is what is happening here. And then we want to plot the solution. So, it is 0 0.5 c1 plus t c2 minus 0 0.5 c1 minus c2 times error function. So, that is the solution and this is for 10 seconds, 50 seconds, 100 seconds. As usual, we draw some lines to show uh, for example, where the uh, interface is, where these two things are put together and what is the far field composition on either side C1 and C2 for the left and right uh, respectively. So, let us uh, uh, do this. So, this figure is also there in, in Porter and Distilling. So, you see that uh, we took a material with 1.4 and we took another material with 0.1. So, initially this was the composition profile. And as time goes by uh, in this uh, the composition keeps decreasing, in this the composition keeps increasing. So, the area uh, under uh, this part should be exactly equal to the area under this part by mass conservation because the ca carbon that is leaving from here is entering here. And uh, this uh, depth of penetration of the diffusion curves is proportional to root dt. So, as you can see 10, 50, 100, etc., you will see that it is penetrating more and more. In this case, it is losing carbon, in this case, it is uh, uh, gaining carbon. And uh, of course, the after an infinite amount of time, you expect that everything becomes 0 0.75. So, that will be the composition that uh, the system is trying to uh, reach at the end after an infinitely long time, that is the composition that is going to take place. But as you can see, uh, as the time proceeds, uh, you will see that for example, in 10 seconds how much diffusion took place and the 50 and 50 to 100, it is less because the concentration gradients are coming down as diffusion um, progresses. 
uh, which means uh, that it will take longer and longer to achieve the same amount of diffusion. So, things also get slowed down uh, compared to the initial stages. So, it will take really long time for uh, composition to reach the uh, uniform value everywhere. So, uh, we have looked at uh, three different uh, solutions for diffusion equation and all these solutions are uh, based on the cumulative uh, standard normal distribution function and it is related to the error function through this uh, formula 2 times uh, uh, cumulative distribution function minus 1 is basically the error function and that happens to be the solution for the diffusion equation. And uh, you can get this solution uh, using R because R can calculate uh, this uh, cumulative distribution function. Typically, if you look at uh, textbooks uh, like uh, Raghavan or Porter and Distilling, you will find that uh, they uh, list out uh, error function solution for different values. So, you have to manually calculate and for values in between you have to either uh, um, do interpolation or find tables uh, that will calculate it for you or write uh, programs that will uh, do it for you. But of course, with R you can just uh, call this uh, uh, p-norm and uh, get the solutions. Uh, so, so, to summarize we have looked at uh, normal distribution, it is a continuous distribution and uh, random errors uh, give rise to this distribution. Irrespective of from which distribution you sample, if there are random errors they also follow this distribution. So, it is very, very common to see this. It also has a relevance uh, to material science and engineering specifically because the solution for the diffusion equation which happens to be one of the important uh, mechanisms uh, by which uh, uh, atomic movement happens uh, in materials especially in solids which leads to lots of phase transformations and microstructural changes which are very, very important from an engineering point of view because all of the heat treatment is basically based on phase transformations and how fast or slow these phase transformations take place namely diffusion. So, it is very, very important to have an idea about the solution for the diffusion and it so happens that this normal distribution function has a relationship to the uh, solution of the diffusion equation for certain boundary conditions and that is what we have explored in this session. We will continue looking at uh, normal distribution a little bit more before we, we move on to the other probability distributions. Thank you.